Hello viewers, welcome to Kerala's interaction with Kerala Blasters head coach Ivan Bukomanovic. So you you all need no introduction for him. In fact, you you have been hearing his name for the past month. Uh, Kerala Blasters announced him in June. So it's it's nearly 2 months since then. and we are just one week away from kerala blasters pre season which is set to begin on july 30th so yeah i i'm not uh, you know uh, i mean uh, wasting any more time let's uh, let's just get straight into it hi ivan how are you how is uh, lockdown going on and uh, how how are things o- over there hi hi how are you going everything is all right uh, actually here where i am now uh, with my family uh, we have no lockdowns and uh, everything's quite let's say easier than it was in the past past months past year year and a, and a half already so actually uh, hopefully for the better times hopefully that everything will be uh, gone very soon uh, with all these pandemic things going around the world so hopefully uh, and uh, actually to see you soon uh, all of you down there in india yeah So uh well uh, first question is obviously going to be about Kerala Blasters and how you reached here. So can you just tell us about the move to Kerala Blasters and you know how it came about how the talks began how Kerala Kings met you how you interacted and how that move came about. You know in, in the football actually uh, the things are going really fast. Uh sometimes it happens uh, quick and actually from the very first contact couple of months ago with the club's direction uh, with the sport, sporting director everything was uh, let's say positive and from the very first contact uh, i was very excited and uh, i had a positive feeling uh, i have to admit that uh, you know uh, when i meet people i like to have that uh, kind of feeling uh, what you know it's it's good to have the like the feeling what your gut is telling you and uh, actually from the very first contact i had a really positive uh attitude uh positive energy and actually the professionalism that uh Mr. Stinkis uh showed to uh, our conversation actually later on with the club's direction everything uh, was po- positive uh, for me and uh, I decided to put aside some uh, some other options and actually uh when I saw well, I mentioned that couple of times in uh, some interviews when I saw the huge uh, yellow army behind the club and uh, fans and everything was going around the uh, Kerala Blasters for me it was absolutely yes i wanted to become a part of that project i wanted to become uh, the part of that family and for me it was absolutely yes so apart from professionalism positive attitude uh, clear and concrete uh, talks uh, i was very happy with that and actually i'm really really uh, glad that i uh, jumped into this project all right So let's let's just shift our attention from Kerala Blasters to Indian football. Uh so yeah we know uh, we've been here like I said we have we have been hearing your name for a while now. We have definitely uh, read about you. We have we have seen where all you have worked. So yeah you have worked in Belgium uh, in Serbia. Uh you have worked in uh, Cyprus also. So uh, this is your fourth coaching assignment. Why Indian football at this particular point of time? You know you've been coaching in Europe so far. by the sudden shift to indian football you know f- first of all a- as a man i like challenges i like adrenaline i like uh, atmosphere so i just mentioned it you know with the huge yellow fans and everything you know the g- greatness of uh, kerala blasters football club and everything attracts me uh, a lot so actually you know as a man of football uh, you have to like uh, challenges you have to like things that you can uh, see the things growing up building up interesting things so actually uh, you know as a coaching job you always look to to be part of something interesting something exciting i think that uh, uh, indian super league indian football is uh, in a quite of expansion i think that in the following years it will be better and better it will grow up and actually you know when you like challenges when you like to be part of these things you want to be part of that so actually for me it was like i said it was absolutely yes and uh, I like it. I like being part of those things. I like challenges and uh you know hopefully for the best. So actually I think that India football will improve day by day. It the league will uh, be growing year by year. So you know I want to be part of that. All right. Well uh, next uh, let's talk about uh, Kerala Kings. So because we are, we are aware that he played a very important role. I think the most important role in you coming here. 
so can you tell us something about your uh, specific interaction with skin kiss i mean uh, how what you guys talked uh, you already said fr- starting from the beginning itself there was a positive connection between you uh, both you and kerala blasters management can you just elaborate further tell us more about how carolis approached you and how that interaction went you know like i said it was really professional approach uh, i have to admit i like that way because you know in the football you have to be a professional you have to be disciplined and from the very first moment it was really concrete and strict to the point and uh, i like that and i think that he's a, he's a great guy he's a great professional uh, he knows the job perfectly so far everything is going uh, really good in our co- cooperation i think that we understand each other uh, very good about uh, football philosophy about game strategy about all the possible details and uh, you know from the very first contact it was really uh, concrete strict to the to the point and actually uh, we agreed really uh, let's say quickly on uh, on all possible terms so uh, it was not even later on the question about uh, some uh, certain aspects it was only you know when you click with a with a with a person about a certain topic you know it's kind of like you you meet someone and then you speak about one topic and then you click you see that you are on a, on the same golf way so you continue that way and actually i'm glad that i i now collaborate with uh, with him he played an excellent role i think that uh, he is the right man for the job you know uh, he knows his job perfectly well he knows how to deal with uh, certain situations and actually i'm really glad that uh, in his age he's capable of uh, managing all these things correctly all right well uh, so definitely my next question would be about uh, something that's affecting the whole world right now so the the way that it is in uh, india right now uh, we know it's a bit of a tough situation due to covid there is a lot of problems caused by the corona virus in india right now so uh, i mean even while searching for players i mean uh, even coaches every club they are facing problems to bring people to india because you know there is this inner fear uh of covid so uh, did did covid you know uh, create any sort of doubt in your mind when you are coming to india you know since uh, since the covid uh, let's say arrived in our lives uh, more than a year ago you know uh, i remember i was back then in uh, actually in a, in a final uh talks with uh, in one project to to take over one club and then you know something what happened in the whole world that we cannot control actually you know in a certain way we cannot control uh i think that everybody has to adapt you know not only speaking in football you know last i remember last summer when i was like i said about to finalize those things uh you know then i uh, like all around the world you know not not to sound pathetic then my family got hit you know then i got my mother hospitalized for a longer period you know hardly survived covid you know uh then i i decided not to jump into uh, in, into the job i decided to be uh, with my family then uh then then my father got sick you know and then unfortunately he died in november last the last year then you know the still i decided not to work you know i wanted to be with my family and you know, again then my brother with his family got uh, got hit by covid then me around the christmas and new year i got hit so actually uh, you know if we speak about covid later on we all got vaccinated and uh trying to protect ourselves being careful be responsible you know if we speak about covid i think that if everybody stays uh a kind of intelligent careful uh taking care about certain things what the smart people intelligent people are are announcing and telling us to do i think that uh we will get over that and we will uh, have covid disappearing uh, you know protecting ourselves I know that today it's not evident and it's not really easy to attract and say to some certain uh players or people you know come to India and be in India it's a difficult you know all around the world especially now in India but you know for me it was never a question you know I'm I'm not afraid I'm uh you know I'm the guy who can adapt uh, quickly who can uh, accept the things how they are and actually to go with the flow so now in this situation okay again in a, in a bubble we will adapt we have to continue and you know uh, hoping that uh, it will come to an end that the situation will uh, improve that everything will be uh, 
back in normal like it was before and actually to continue with our lives. Of course, it's not nice when you see uh, many people, you know, going away from us, disappearing, dying. And uh, it's not easy. But anyway, we have to continue. That's life. And uh, I think that we have all to accept the present situation to to respect the rules and the regulations what they're telling to us and uh, to adapt and hoping for uh, the better days, hoping that it will uh, go away, that we will all of us have our lives back. So I actually, I hope and uh, hardly, and I hope and believe that uh, they will they will come soon. So let's go day day by day and see what will happen. Right, right. So yeah, uh, first of all, I'm sorry for your loss. I hope everybody is fine uh, right now. They're Thank you. Themselves. Uh, well, we'll move on to the next question. This come, uh, this might come as a you know challenging question for you, but this is a fact. So uh, there is no way around answering this question. So, uh, well, Kerala Blasters have had eleven different head coaches so far. So if you are aware, uh, there were eleven, and you are the twelfth coaching appointment of the club. So we have. I mean, I would speak from the first person because I am also a fan of Kerala Blasters. So I would say we because it's my club. So uh, we we have had. some of some uh, some of an issue with uh, you know managers staying uh, some for some reason they are not staying beyond a year so why would fans including myself believe that you are the one to make a difference <laughs> yeah hard, hard hard question to answer you know yeah look it's i think that uh, when everybody speaks about that uh, kind of uh, let's say pressure or whatever you you know i like to see that as a positive uh, influence as a positive motivation because you know as a former football player as a let's say now as a coach you, you know you have to know that every boy when uh, every boy when he starts shooting football you know uh, around the block or uh, in front of his house everybody dreams to play in front of a huge huge crowd everybody dreams to play in front of uh, big stadiums so actually all this fuss and all this pressure you know building up and it's kind of you know huge motivation so me as a coach now i think that it's uh, it's all about building up correct uh, uh, process that you work with your team building up and improve uh, players who can uh, you know achieve good results and uh, you know play together uh, making the things uh, work so i think that me as a coach i'm the guy who likes to do that i'm the guy who up until now you know it was it was happening so you know in in all that process it's uh, it's about uh, you know educating teaching uh, showing things so of course winning games because at the end uh, of that process there is a result but uh, you know you have to know it's uh, in a football uh, it never happened that something uh, you know arrives over the night or something happens uh, over one day even now you know there is olympics uh, beginning in tokyo so if you think that the uh, now the the sportsmen who are now in the olympics that they they started preparing themselves like 6 uh, months ago or last year you know you're wrong it's it's a process of a four years so every day counts so i think that in a in a dead process that we will try to add and we will try to work with the with the team i think that it will be all right because uh, there is a huge potential there is a there's you know good players interesting players and i think with the, with that challenge and uh, maybe something new or approach it uh, it could happen so and like you say there are all the possible details like uh, you know a great uh, base of fans you know uh, great support and i think with in a football with the correct work and the correct approach it can happen you know in a football you have to respect the football logic as well if you work correctly if you respect certain things at the end of the day there are results and you don't have to be focused on uh, you know final result only uh, as a result you have to be focused on every day process you know every day work so you know as a coach uh, I work on that way. So hope for the best and then we'll see then we'll judge later on because you never judge the book by uh uh sorry uh uh you you, you cannot judge you know something the, before you see it. So we'll see. Right. We'll see. I think that uh, we will be tough team to beat. All right, but yeah, all the best. I mean, um 
I hope you succeed. Uh, definitely, we need the uh, positive results. So I hope that happens. Well, we'll Thank move you. on to yeah, yeah. We'll move on to our next question. Uh, so yeah, uh, this once again about the Indian Super League. So definitely, uh, after uh, you know interest from Kerala Blasters approached you. Definitely, you must mu you must have you know have uh, checked about the league. You must have followed the league, uh, the teams, the players. So, what are your first impressions of the ISL? Have you have you actually have you started following the team? I mean, have you watched the previous season's games? Have you uh, created an impression of the league by now? Uh, well, let's be honest. I I saw all the games of Kerala Blasters last season. Uh, if we speak about Indian Super League. You know, today in the TV rights and all these uh, packages, with if you speak about uh, sports channels, uh, television, internet, everything, it's been more than five years that I have Indian Super League on my TV package. You know, and uh, from time to time, when there, there was a time I was watching, because I, I'm, I'm the man, I'm a man of football. You know, I like watching new things. I like watching new games. I remember even last season during the COVID period, watching uh, some games from Indian Super League because it was on my TV. You know, and from the very like I said, from the very first contact with the uh, with the club's management, of course you get information. Of course, uh, and then, like I say, I watched all the games. I saw all the games, and uh, you know, it's not about your own team. It's about the other teams. You want to get in touch with uh, with everything. And actually, I think that uh, I quite recognize and know uh, you know certain qualities, and uh, especially our players now. So. Uh, I'm really, really hardly waiting to to come down there to meet all of them to start working with them because I think they're all good guys. They're guys with the, with the talent, with the potential. So, and uh, like I said, I hope everything will be right. So, up until now, I think that from my perspective, uh, I I know quite enough. All right. So yeah, just a follow up question. Uh, so you you have been watching Kerala Blasters games from last season. Uh, what do you think are the like main uh, primary qualities that the team, the players should improve maybe to finish at a higher position next season? Have you identified any such issues that the team had last season that requires improvement? Again, you know, when you speak about uh, certain improvements and especially in football, it's not about one detail. So it's all, it's about the whole image, you know, and uh, you know, if you want to achieve good results in football, in, in every professional sport, okay, let's not say about football now. If you want to achieve good results, uh, winning prizes, you know, it's about uh, consistent work, it's about hard work, it's about excellency in the process that we are uh, all speaking about. You know, uh, you heard that word all around, like having that process. Uh, and if you, if you follow that process, if you work, uh, hard correctly uh on a correct way you know uh if you can if you get the process right the product takes care of itself it means that the result comes at the end you know uh i think that uh, where a lot where a lot of people go wrong is uh, they focus on the product instead of focusing on the process so you know uh when you focus on a product uh, you neglect the details of the process that go into making a good product. So, you know, we live today we live in a culture that everybody is focusing on a final product. You know, everybody is like, okay, uh, how many points you score, how many goals you score, or, uh, uh, you know, how many games you... There, All of us and many people, you know, in, in, not only... In a, you know, everybody is focusing on a final product instead of focusing on a, on a certain aspects in that process and in a sport it's very important so uh, if you get the process right it means hard work consistency how smart you work uh, things about your character things about your uh, positive mindset things about your positive attitude uh, body language at the end you will be happy with the product because like i say the product takes care of itself because at the end you get it you know and if you get that process from the very beginning wrong and you are not concentrating on these important things, you will not be happy with the product at the end. So I think that now in the football today, in the modern football, in the modern sport, we just mentioned the Olympics, you know, like I say, the guys who are now in the Olympics, you know, 
they did not start training like three months ago. No, it's been like four years that they're preparing now for that cycles. You know, okay, with the COVID, it's now five years. You know, so that's the process. You have to, you have to respect, and then at the end, there is the product. There is the re positive result. If you don't get right, if you don't understand that, you know, especially now if you speak about our team, especially if you speak about young players coming, you know, to senior level and uh, uh, wanting to achieve all these things, they have to understand that it's about that hard work, it's about that uh, process that they will have to respect in order to become, uh, to have important role in the football. So, uh, even if they now today, you know, with internet things and everything, you can with two clicks, you can see many interesting things on internet. So, and if anybody thinks that the biggest sportsman in the world, take any sport, football, basketball, cricket, baseball, take any sport. If anybody thinks that all these big stars and big sportsmen, they achieved all those things uh, in one day or maybe in uh, uh, one game. No, they're wrong because there is a process behind it. Nobody sees that, you know, all that process that is going behind the big curtain. We see the game, we see the, we see the final product, but everything what's happening behind that, that's a huge uh, process. So if you respect that, if you follow those things, then you achieve a good result. So actually, you know, we will try to add something to, to follow that process, try to build up certain interesting things that not only young players, but all the players will improve because every player can improve in any part of his life. So not depending on age, like, you can improve all the time. So we will see, hope for the best. Right. So, well, my next question uh, is about, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this was not in our plans in initially, but then on Thursday, Kerala Blasters announced their first foreign signing, Adrian Luna. Uh, it was okay. all of a sudden, uh, I mean, it, it took us everyone by surprise. You didn't expect that, no? No, 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 no. <laughs> I really, we none of us saw that coming, uh, and it was it was a pleasant surprise, in fact. Uh, so, can you just uh, tell us about, I mean, the reasons behind signing Luna? What what you see see in him as his best qualities? I mean, uh, obviously, so the past couple of days, a lot of people have been talking about him, but you know, uh, let them hear from you uh, itself. Like, what does the coach think about his new player? You know, like all the players in our squad, I think he's a good player. You know, I think he has a correct mindset, great body language, response on the field, and uh, the positive side of character that I think the Kerala Blasters needs. It means, you know, giving everything for the team, fighting for the team, making uh, that that shirt that you have, the yellow shirt, making that shirt, you know, wet, giving everything on the pitch for the team. So, besides all those details, he is a good player, you know, if you speak about, uh, you know, technical, skillful, uh, certain details, he's a good player. I think that he will add uh, many interesting things to, to our game, to our play. So we will see. We hope that uh, not only him, but everybody will, will be uh, ready and uh, healthy to, uh, to play all those games. So, like you say, it took uh, maybe some of you by surprise. Uh, we were following uh, not only him, but many players already now for months, you know, and I think with our uh, mindset and idea of the way we want to play later on, I think that he will fit perfectly in our uh, in our game. So I think that he is an experienced player. He already won some prizes in his life. He used to play on an international level, so he has no problem to play in front of the crowd. And actually, he has a really positive mindset, you know, and I think that uh, you know, in uh, not only his case, but later on, uh, if you speak all of, about all of our players, you know, they must know that, uh, you, you know, they, we have to treat everything like it's the most important thing in the world, you know, warming up, every ball, every moment, every, so, and the players with that correct mindset and that mentality, they will be welcome in the team. Because I, like uh, we said, you know, we want to build up the team that everybody will, uh, will be afraid of. We want to build up the team that everybody will be saying, you know, today is a hard day. We have to face Kerala Blasters, you know. So actually, I think that later on, maybe that we will take you again by surprise with some signings, you know, and that uh, the other players, foreign players who will be coming and joining us will bring in something extra to our team and, you know, bringing that extra quality that we need, not only from technical side, tactical side, but also from, you know, all possible 
you know, sides that we will be uh, needing to improve our team and to play high up the table. That's our goal, you know. All right. So yeah, uh, you 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 already spoke about how every player in the team needs to improve on various aspects. Uh, collective improvement is your goal at Kerala Blasters. But I I cannot help asking this, but I need to ask you uh, because you know following your career, we have seen that uh, I've observed that you have uh, you you have played a very good role in youth development, particularly. I've heard the names like uh, Michi Bachwai, Lauren Seaman, etc. Associated with you. They have worked under you. They have improved under you. So, and when you look at Kerala Blasters, you will also see again a very youth, a young squad, youthful squad, full of energy, full of you know potential. Uh, how does this uh, young squad associate? I mean, uh, associate with your goals? Like, uh, how do you uh, see see this? Uh, do you see this as a perfect opportunity to you know develop a lot of young players? Uh, is that a part of your goal? You, uh, you know what, like I said, you always adapt to uh, to present situation. The fact that Kerala Blasters uh, has uh, so many good and potential young players, it's a uh, it's great, uh, great challenge. You know, you have to know that uh, every soul of uh, every club in the world, it, lay, it lays down in a, in a youth core. So, and if you speak, you know better than me, you know, you're, you're a Kerala Blaster fan, you know, if you are from that part and if you have the possibility you know uh, wearing that shirt playing for your hometown playing for your team uh, representing your uh, you know neighborhood your your team your 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 city it's a great honor you know and all these young players they don't have to take that as a pressure they don't have to take that as a as a hard thing it's a pleasure they have to take it as a pleasure they have to be proud you know and uh, you know, developing young players, it's a process that we, ju- we were just speaking about that, you know. In a, in a football, every player, you know, professional player, when you start playing and you come to a certain level, you have a chance to go on a senior level playing as a professional. You have to know that every player uh, has uh, his own path, his own career, way. So, you know, and then it depends on many aspects, how they will develop, how they will play, how they will accept certain things. And actually, now having a, let's say, interesting group of those young players, of course, that positive energy, positive attitude and everything we can face, uh, like you just have to give sense to that. You just have to give a uh, right direction. They understand that they are being part of a great club, great uh, group. And of course, being proud and uh, later on being uh, glad, uh, having the possibility wearing that uh, shirt. So, you know, we never knew, especially in my previous experiences, you know, you never know that some players will uh, grow up to become uh, great stars or uh, to play on a, on a high level. You never know that because there are so many aspects. You just mentioned maybe a couple of players. Now I'm happy and even being today in constant contact with uh, with all of them, you know, exchanging messages, talking to them, you know, calling each other on a, on a special occasions, birthday or whatever, you know. As a coach, it makes you happy. It makes you proud, you know, and... Uh, in education part, you know, uh, all of us, we as educators, as coaches, we accept that fact that you have to work and develop and help those boys finding their path. Themselves, the boys, they have to accept and uh, know that the path of becoming a football player, it's not easy. You know, if you are talented, it's like 5%. That's it. You know, you have to work hard. You have to be consistent. You have to believe in that process. You have to, you know, there is also some sayings. You always have to know that... Uh, there will be somebody better, you know, there is someone who is better than you, but you have to perform and work hard to give him a hard time, you know, to, to show that you are a, a hard worker, that you, and in the football, it's not about only one player because it's collective sport. So all of them, they have to understand all those processes and work hard, uh, trying to improve and become better. And then, like I said, just mentioned before, and then the product at the end, it comes by itself because in the football, you have games to improve, you have games to confirm, you have training sessions. So I think that we will find the correct formula, we will find the correct way to, let's say, direct all those energies, positive energies, I think, and positive attitude of all those boys and seeing all them becoming better. I think that the club can profit later on uh, with that situation. 
and in the end the Indian Super League, Indian football, Indian national team, because when you have better players, you have better national team. So it's the whole process connecting, you know, it happened. Uh, I was watching that in Belgium, where I live uh, now for years, you know, in that process, Belgium is today one of the best, uh, let's say, football national teams in the world, because there is a process that they were following with all the clubs together. And that's why they have now really good players all around the world, especially in top leagues. So that's the job. That's the things that attract me. That's the things I like to do as a coach. So we'll see again. Hope for the best. Right. Well, uh, my next question. Uh, so this is also re related to transfers, especially. So uh, we all know, uh, like you know, there are a couple, uh, there are a few people inside the club who play the most important role in transfers. One of them being Carol Skinkis himself. One of them being you. So can you just uh, give fans a little clarity on you know uh, how these transfers are made? I mean, how the players are identified and how who approaches them. Uh, can you just give us a, a little bit of a clarity on that? What happens at the club during a transfer? But, uh, let's say again, in, 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 in that uh, part of, uh, of the work, there is again a process, you know, when we speak, first there is a game strategy, there is a game, the way you want to play with your team. Then you want, there is the process of scouting uh, certain players with correct profiles and that you need. So then when you scout some certain players, like it was the case now with our new player, Adrian Luna, you scout the player, you you follow him for a, for a month, you know, you follow every game. Sometimes it goes so deeply that you will go and follow and uh, get the information about one player, how he lives, how he eats, if he's a professional enough, how he behaves, you know, there are many details that me as a coach, I like to know that. I like to see that because, you know, having positive, let's say, atmosphere, positive energy in your team, everything matters, you know, every possible detail matters, you know, how you behave when you wake up, how you behave in a professional life, how you behave with your family, how you behave with your teammate, how you behave uh, on the pitch, outside the pitch, uh, with media, how you behave with the fans, you know, all these details we take in consideration. So later on, we respect the hierarchy in our, uh, in our club. So actually, uh, our sporting director, Carolis, is really good in all these things. Later on, when we see and find the correct, let's say, profile or interesting player, then uh, it's up to club management to, to, let's say, to get the deal done. Me as a coach, you know, I don't uh, interact with all those things. I'm the coach. So actually, I'm happy when we have a good player, you know. And later on, I think that in the right uh, organization, when everybody is doing uh his job then everything's perfect so in this case uh so far i'm really happy that everybody knows what's the situation i think that uh, mr skinkis is doing the great job i think that we all together discuss about our possible uh foreign uh, let's say reinforcements and then later on it's about the club's management to get the deal done so me as a coach at the end we have the player on the pitch and we work with that so that's the process. But we all together, we speak about that on a daily basis. Let's say that many a couple of times a day, we speak even many times a day, you know, we speak uh, about many details. So actually, this is how it goes in the football. This is how it goes in, in the football. It goes really quick and it can happen that some transfers, they happen in a, in a one day. So, but it's a process that we are following for months. Yeah. Well, as a follow-up question, do you take part? Uh, did you take part in the identification of players like Luna? I mean, when players are scouted, uh, do they show them to you? Uh, I mean, how he plays, and do uh, and you give them the nod, and then Skinkis proceeds with the negotiations. Am I correct, or is there a difference there? No, actually, it's uh, like I said, it's uh, it's everybody together. You know, when you when you scout and when you uh, let's say find the correct profile of a player playing uh, somewhere abroad or in your domestic uh, league. You know, it's it's all of us together, you know, speaking, discussing about it, uh, why it could be possible reinforcement, why it could be a good profile for our team. And actually, we, at the end, we all uh, give our, let's say, opinion about that. And finally, we agreed on a, on a move. So this is how it goes. This is how it goes. Of course, you know, uh, you 
let's say you organize, you precise your game. Uh, game strategy, the profiles you need and everything as a team you want to play. Sometimes it is organized by the club because it uh, takes, okay, take a great example in a, in a European football, uh, one of the biggest clubs, uh, Ajax, Amsterdam, you know, for years now, for decades, they have the same strategy, they have the same principles of building up players, building up things, and that's it. And they are attracting the players with that profiles, they are attracting the coaches with that profiles, and that's how it goes. Now, in our case, well, I think that we we started organizing one interesting, let's say, uh, organization with all these things and that we all agree on, on certain things. And like I said, we have a really good cooperation so far. So actually, uh, it's up to us all, you know, to bring up uh, interesting uh, reinforcement in order later to get a good result. So this is how it goes in our case. All right. Well, next question. It's about uh, something. It's a it's a, it's a big problem that Kerala Blasters have been facing for a few years now. We are all pretty disappointed about it. It's 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 about a lack of you know proper pre-season preparations. So for the past few years, I mean, we know last year obviously we could not do much because of COVID, and even before there were issues with pre-season that you know caused us during the regular season when the league happened. So uh, finally, I mean, after a very long time. Uh, Kerala Blasters are going to have a very good preseason, I'm, I believe. Uh, so, how do you? I mean, uh, how important is this uh, long and you know uh, detailed proper preseason for the league? And uh, are you confident that this season's preseason will make a difference to your game in the league? You have to know that the preseason is everything. You know, the preseason preparation for one season is everything. So actually, if you don't have correctly, if you have it long, your team can suffer. If you have it short, your team can suffer. If you don't have it correctly, your team can suffer. Because not on a short term, but on a long term. You know, I remember in my previous, let's say, experiences, having pre-season on a, let's say, a proper way and then playing 65 games the whole season, you know, with one squad. Like, you have to do it correctly. I know that the situation is not quite easy with the COVID around the world. And then we, we will have to adapt, you know, again, uh, I think that we organized pl plan uh, ABC and then depending on the uh, current period, depending on uh, maybe uh, international flights, if you later on go abroad and everything, we're still waiting for certain confirmations. You know, the preseason is key to everything. If you, it's, it's, not, the, it's not the point to start early, you know, it's point to start on a on the right moment to do the things correctly. So, and if you have enough time, then you build up the good things that later on you can uh, you can play your season to avoid uh, unpleasant situations, unpleasant injuries. You know, because on the long term, if you don't do it correctly, then the you know your team suffers, and then the players suffer, and there are injuries, and then you lose important keys. You know, because. All of us, you know, the bodies, you are not uh, a machine at one, you know, the bodies, they respond. And if you have that program, if you have that things uh, organized correctly, and then you can hope, then you can hope to achieve good results at the end. Because in football, you there is no guarantee. You know, you can work every day correctly, hard and everything, but yet at the end, uh, you can lose because it's sport, it's the game, it's the end, you know, you never know. But if you work correctly, if you work on a proper way, you can hope that at the end, you know, there will be a good product. So now this year we want to organize, uh, let's say, clean and uh, good preseason period where uh, we can scout and uh, filter all the things we need when later on, again, depending on a, a bubble quarantine period uh, or flying uh, abroad or coming back you know with all these things we have to adapt we have to and we have to be capable of modifying in one day you know even if you plan and prepare your pre-season of i don't know six eight ten twelve weeks whatever it is even if you prepare your whole season of six months you know every training session you have to be capable of modifying in one day because with today COVID situation, you, you see yourself, it changes every week, you know, it can change every day because the government due to the situation can change many things. So then we have to modify, we have to adapt. So we now 
uh, from the beginning of August, we want to start certain things because we want to have enough time to to do everything, let's say, on a proper way, to give everything uh, space and time to to meet everybody, to talk to everybody, to to organize the things, you know, and to have a, a good time, you know, to work a lot because I think that all our coaching staff now, we are hard workers and we want to do the things on a, on a proper way. So like that, if you do, I just mentioned at the beginning, if you follow that process, if you are in the football logic, then you hope that it will be okay. You know, if you're not doing correctly, one day, there will be an issue. So, and from our side, we want to do it correctly like we uh, were educated before and uh, hope for the best, for improvement of the whole team of uh, all the players and then later on to see that positive product. That's our goal with the preseason. Right. Well, next let's talk about a very important aspect of the club. Like you said in the beginning, one of the you know important reasons why you came here, it's the fans. So, Kerala Blasters, as you know, as you are already aware of it by now, uh, we are like one of the most popular teams in India. We have like one of the biggest fan bases in India. And, uh, you know, that's what sets us apart. Like, uh, Kerala Blasters uh, are different from a lot of other clubs because of the same reason. So, uh, but then one, one big problem that it's my personal observation, I may be wrong. Uh, one thing that I found lacking last season was the absence of fans. I think Kerala Blasters uh, faced a lot of difficulty uh, because they did not have that support from the stands. Uh, you know, uh, because because that's a very important factor in our results before that. So, uh, this season again, there will be a bio bubble. There won't be uh, fans watching the game from the stadium. So, uh, how, how, how much of a psychological advantage, I mean, not advantage, psychological disadvantage do you think that will become, you know, uh, when you are playing the matches this season? You know what, the the biggest trigger what what attracts me to to this challenge, were, you know, were the fans, you know. But please don't tell the to club direction. <laughs> no, no. no, really. Uh, look, I see uh, the huge army and actually everything that I heard about uh, and uh, everything what I uh, I've seen. I think that it will be for us kind of disadvantage because I think that if you have a good team, if you have, if you can play in front of that crowd, if you can pl- play in, the, in front of that stadium, everybody should be afraid of coming and playing against Kerala Blasters, you know, because that's the that's our idea to build up the team that uh, to you know to play like that and. Especially if you have that kind of support, you know, it gives you it gives you the wind in your back, you know, it gives you extra motivation. Actually, me as a former player, when I used to play in that in those clubs like that, you know, it, it always it was giving me extra motivation. It was giving me extra power. So you, you're like, I'm possible to beat, especially in your home ground. So actually, I think that for us, it will be kind of disadvantage because we cannot have that kind of support, but I'm sure that we will feel that. On a certain way, we will feel that energy. I'm sure of that. So actually the players, you know, I think that they are all aware that they're playing for a good, great club, you know, they're playing uh, for, for the club with a, with a huge support. And actually, you know, like I said, with the correct and uh, you know, mindset, everything, you know, knowing playing for that club, you know, it can give you something extra. It can give you something, uh, you know, the new, let's say, the big motivation to outperform your opponent to win the games. And I'm really sorry that again we will not be playing in front of of our fans in in Kochi. And actually, I hope that situation will be better and that very soon it will be possible to play in uh, in front of the fans because football you play for the fans. Right. You know, I think that that's the most important things. I think that the the, the fans are really, really, really important in a, in, a, in a sports, especially in football. If you speak now about the case of Kerala Blasters, and that the players they will be aware of it, and uh, we will do everything possible to make uh, all the fans proud and happy, and especially to make the players proud uh, by wearing the yellow shirt. Right. All right. Well, uh, I, I I just missed ask the, asking this question earlier. I should have asked you earlier, but uh, just this is just a doubt. So, uh, having followed your career so far, uh, so you you coached at Standard Liège for a while. 
and then uh, there was a small break after which you uh, went to you know slovan bratislava uh, and then another break and then at cyprus so and then there there was another break followed by which you uh, uh, you know joined at kerala blasters so obviously like you said earlier uh, there was a plan to join another club before covid hit last year but apart from that again there has been these small breaks that you take during your career so again fans are also curious to know even i am curious to know what were the reason for these breaks well i just explained before uh, last season after our experience in cyprus the break was uh, due to covid Yeah. And I wanted to spend more time with my family and all the things what uh, was happening not only in my family but around the world and then actually at one point you you said to yourself that uh, you need that break you know uh, if we speak about other professional breaks you know uh, I'm the guy uh, it's you know as a coach uh, later let's say before as a player you know you have your career you have to follow your seasons you have to you know one season you play somewhere the other maybe two seasons you play at the other side you know as a coach there is a totally different life totally different approach and then uh, you know you want to to pick up your uh, your challenges you want to pick up uh, the correct jobs you know you want to pick up correct environment you want to pick up uh, the things that suits you because we are all different you know you have a uh, many players that they cannot fit into one squad they, they have many players and coaches they cannot fit into one environment so you know let's say my decisions to take uh, those breaks breaks was you know personal i wanted to have uh, time for myself for my family for uh, for you know certain things and uh, it is not about jumping from uh, from one, one club into another club from one job into one job because uh, i think that everybody needs kind of time to look into one other perspective to think about certain things because you know i think that's life is about that so like i said i remember going and uh, after every challenge you know immediately talking about certain uh, clubs and environments you know traveling seeing but finally refusing because uh, that was my choice my gut my stomach was telling me that was not the right time or not the correct let's say uh, challenge and that was it you know i think that football today if you speak even playing football or coaching on you know it's like swimming it's like you cannot forget it you know it's like you know talking or you know you cannot forget it it's about taking some you know taking one period in your life to take a break to spend with your family because you have to know you know a detail i quit my country my home country and my home i quit when i was really young boy now for more than a half of my life i live abroad i live look now for the last 16 years my home was belgium you know I, my home is belgium you know and uh, going all around the world uh, playing as a player later on as a coach you know you go around the world you work because that's a job and sometimes when you miss your family and when you miss certain things you want to take some time and uh, fill that gaps you know spending time with the the person that you love especially if you if you have that issues like it happened during the covid so i said okay now right. you know you're just not you're just not motivated and uh, and ready to go and work and i think that from my side it was more honest towards myself and uh, and even the, the the your club uh, not to work if you were not ready 100% So that was my decision every time to take a step back to think about certain things and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very important message that at times you might need to take a step back and think about it. You know, you need to have the right motivation so I I I guess that's fair enough from your part. Uh and well uh well my I I we are moving to the final stages of our interview. We just have like a couple of questions more. So yeah uh, so this is uh, once again related to Kerala Blasters so if you uh, so you you have spoken in great detail about the uh, you know uh, working through the process to reach that final end product however you know uh, i would like to once again speak about one particular end product uh, that you know Kerala Blasters uh, at the end of it all they have they have not managed to qualify for the playoffs uh, for many years now so that's one thing that has been affecting the club again 
so have you set any kind of you know uh, i i i'll trust this of course uh, you spoken about you know following that process to reach a particular goal but have you set any particular aim or target for this season like where do you see yourself finishing on the table or maybe go ahead a straight challenge for the trophy uh, have you set any such targets for the team like that maybe at least mentally of course you know you always put your targets in your head that's that's for sure and then you're working towards your targets that now in this in this case let's say uh, we are building up something new we are building up uh, i think uh, a good team i think that later on with our reinforcements and uh, the big and the good combination with the good domestic players with the mix of youth and experienced ones and uh, amount of let's say foreign players for signings i think that we will build up a good collective you know a good team and actually when you have that positive attitude when you have that positive approach when you work together in that process then you hope to achieve those results so actually our goals of course to be better day by day to be better than the last year to be uh, you know high up the table so i think that every team with the uh, ambition must have those goals so i think you know in our way of seeing football and especially in my let's say philosophy uh as a player you have to be ambitious as a player you first you have to be disciplined you know hard worker disciplined and you must have ambition if you want to achieve something you must have ambition you must you must have that willing to reach certain goals because like that you improve you push yourself day by day you know if you don't care if you just like okay i will do this job day by day that's not it then you are on the wrong place especially now with kerala blasters so we want players who will be hard working disciplined with ambition and of course with passion playing for uh, for our team so our ambitions will be like that you know disciplined hard working you know with passion to achieve high goals we want to be high up uh, on the table so that's our goals so are you targeting a playoff spot have you set yourself that way i think that every team in india super league is targeting high spot in playoffs so <laughs> actually this season again it will be 11 or 10 teams uh, we will see you know so i think that every team has that idea to be in the top 4 to play the playoffs so why shouldn't we and i think that everybody in in our team especially you know the players you know if you come to play for kerala blasters you must have that ambition so that's it so we we, we as a coaching staff will be pushing that so we want that all right well uh, this is our final question uh, once again can you just uh, you know send across a message to the fans of kerala blasters yeah, obviously you will be seeing them i think in a week's time uh but uh, anyways uh, you're you're about to come to india so can you just send across a message to fans what they should hope for what they should expect for uh with kerala blasters in the coming season look they can expect that we will be working hard they will be playing hard and that we will be pushing uh, ourselves to you know to make them proud and happy you know so i i really hardly wait i can't hardly wait to to arrive in india finally to to start working with the with the team with all these boys to meet all these people uh, within the club and actually to start you know with all that process so uh, i hope that we will be in uh, uh, in state and capable of uh, making all these things uh, you know as a as a reality because i think that we will have everything to do so so hope to see you soon guys right thank you thank you so much coach i think i have i've asked everything that i had uh, wanted to ask uh, so i think we'll wind up this interaction right about now so uh, okay finally, uh, yeah well uh, thank you so much for uh, you know uh, spending this time with me i hope i did not ask any stupid questions i hope you enjoyed the, this interaction <laughs> <laughs> i always like talking about the football thank you thank you for calling me Yeah right. Uh, uh, have you decided your arrival? I mean, when, uh, what day are you arriving in India? It will be uh, somewhere around next weekend. We are still waiting for our uh, flights con- uh, confirmation. 
all right all right all right coach thank you so much uh, like uh, you all know about us the fans uh, i'm not speaking from a journalist point of view right now you know about us we will be following kerala blasters very closely we will be uh, you know supporting the club also and from a journalist point of view i think we'll meet again during press conferences uh, we'll have more questions we'll have more to talk about so i'm looking forward to meeting you soon again uh, uh, i mean happy journey in advance come to india soon let's uh, start our preparations fast thank you so much thank you thank you and hope to see you soon all of you guys thank you yeah thank you thank you bye bye